All right, well, hello, I'm Chris, and this is going to be my bodywork video. I've been wanting to make a bodywork video for a while, but it's kind of hard to make one because there's so much crap you got to do. The first thing about bodywork is you got to understand what's going on, okay? The main idea is that it's not an art form, it's not a freaking talent, it's an application process, okay? You just have to, the main thing you have to understand about bodywork is that the light is being reflected so whenever there's an imperfection in the smoothness of the surface it's causing a ripple a dent imperfection and it looks bad so that's all you got to understand you're trying to straighten out the surface okay it, it was hit right here you could yeah you could kind of see something but it had it was hit right here and it had a hole in it okay now holes rust holes there was a rust hole right here somewhere you sandblast the crap out of it you get all the old metal out you go to the back now you gotta you want to be able to access the back with a rust hole sandblast the crap out of it and I use kitty hair if I have to cover a hole I'll use kitty hair there is no freaking point in getting the welder out for some little holes as long as you can get to the back of them you're just gonna end up making a big mess okay so Backed with kitty hair, and when I go to paint this, I am going to run paint in there until it completely seals this whole freaking thing off. Now this was sandblasted and primed with epoxy primer. Okay, the first step you want to do is what I call the identification process. And this thing looks like it's really good, but we are going to scuff it. You can use, with, with lots of contours, it's always better to use this scotch bright because we have to abrade the surface but we're just going to scuff this the whole thing real good <clears throat> all right see any rust on there you need to get that off yeah and don't be scared to knock your epoxy off of there it's going to happen another thing is when you're doing body work is always have the trim accessible because you need to see exactly what's being covered you know what I mean because a lot of times you end up wasting your time on something that's covered by a piece of trim so you kind of get an idea how much it's going to cover and then I'm actually probably going to run these on my car because every single freaking Chevelle I've seen doesn't they take these off see so you wouldn't even have to worry about all that down there you just but you get the point Make sure you know what your trim covers. I'm just using a lacquer surfacer. You can use whatever you want, but for beginners, you probably want to use a lacquer surfacer because it's way freaking easier. We're just going to put about two coats. Yeah, this gun. Okay, so we have the about two coats of primer on here. Now, the first thing that I do in the identification process is we're gonna spray a guide coat on here. Okay, now for the guide coat, you need to study that on your own. This isn't a guide coat video, but they have several different types. I just use a paint that I know for 10 years, 15 years does not react to the primer that I use. Okay, so if you want to do body work, you're going to do it right. You're going to have to spend money on tools. You know, there's just no getting around it. Okay, you're not going to do this with this hard block from O'Reilly. This one might even be too hard, but this is my favorite. A lot of people love this block, but it's kind of big in this situation. Now, this foamy one would be really good. So, probably one of them three. Going to use 80 grit first thing we want to do is we're going to start block sanding this and see what happens whenever you're sand you're not trying to force this into the project just glide it over this is a flat surface you're trying to polish the roughness if you put that under a microscope it would look like a mountain range so you're trying to square off all those mountains 
so that the light reflects. Okay, so just. Okay, so that actually came out real good. I had done some rough body work right here, and you can see it looks fine. That's what you want. You want it to look like that. Now we're going to let that dry a little bit more. Let's see, we're just going around, and you can see what happened there. We got a low place here. We got a dent there, low place. You can feel it. And we're just trying to go around and, and, and look for the low places. Okay, so we blocked the whole thing out real good. We got a low place there, low place there, a low place there, and just r random low places. This doesn't even show. And that's whenever you want to run your finger across it, or your hand. See? Doesn't feel like anything. This will probably come out with primer. This, run your hand. There you go. You can feel the dent needs to be filled. Now you're better off filling, just filling it instead of trying to knock it out. But do what you want to do. Okay, so there's only one dent that really needs any filler. We're going to go ahead and put some uh, polyester filler. Probably could use some there, but I'm going to try to prime that out. Now the only time you ever want to hand sand is after you've blocked it and you know that the panel is perfect. Okay, so in other words, to get in there, now after we've blocked it and we see that there's no dents, now there's really nothing wrong with just hand sanding it and trying to get in there. But don't get carried away because you can screw it up. And you can see whenever you're blocking, you're gonna go through metal. You're gonna go down near epoxy. That's why I used the green epoxy. So I would be able to see when I'm going too far. You can see the different layers whenever you're blocking. You're perfecting that. Polishing it, smoothing it. So it will reflect light, but it will. Okay, so get your surface ready. We're just gonna mix a little bit of polyester. Don't ever worry about trying to like smoothing this out perfect. That's, you're just wasting your time. Just get it on there. Now this is a small dent, but it's the same procedure for any dent. So all I have is 80 on a block. Now this is a kind of a stiff block. It's all you need. You're trying to just hit the dent. You're being careful not to scratch around the dent because this is already good. Only sand diagonally. Only sand diagonally. Do not. Well, you can do that, but body work, you just. That's how you sand every single thing. Now, when you get that far, just stop. Just stop. Now, we're going to. Scuff this all real good, try to get all this damn red crap out of here. Then we're gonna put three heavy coats of primer on it. Now when you spray primer thick, you need to freaking be careful and let that stuff dry. So here's another bit of information. Okay, I'm still priming on this one. And you can see that little thing I've been talking about. I thought it was gonna prime out. It might still, but so far it's not looking good. Now see the other one didn't have any dents on it. The other side, it did have this weird, I guess that's a dent, a little dent. Okay. Okay, now we got these little dents. What about using this? Um, I'm gonna say no. You can use what you want. This is just 1K. They sell this anywhere. You saw how we fix that dent. That's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to mix some uh, polyester putty. So I'm going to say no on using this for little dents like that. But you do what you want to. Okay, so we got about three, four coats of thick primer on here. 
Now this is where most people would put their guide code, but that's why we did it first. We don't have to now. We're going to switch it up now. You're not going to use 80. You need to... I think this is 180. Yeah, 180. Now we're going to put it on a spongy block and a hard block. Same thing. Same blocking technique. Start where your body work was. Make sure your body work comes out first. Okay, so when you're doing your final sanding, don't do the edges. Stay off of the edges. You're just trying to knock this flat. This is what the eye sees. The eye sees all this metal. I ain't gonna see that. So we're just trying to knock down the meat, the meaty parts. Okay, and when you come up to these corners, just be easy on them. Letting the paper do the work. Mount, this is a mount under microscope. This is a freaking mountain range. So you're trying to cut all these mountains down. If you try to reflect light off a mountain range, it's going to burr, distort, and you know, it's going to look like shit. So we're just trying to bounce that light off a smooth surface, knock these mountains down. See, we're knocking the mountains down. It sounds stupid, but I wish somebody would have told me that 15 years ago. They told me it was an art form. Body work ain't no fucking art form. Okay. See, we had to go down low here because we're trying to get that out. But once you start seeing stuff like that, you're probably already going to have to put three more coats of primer anyway. But that's fine. Now we're going to do our little stupid dent guy right here. See, that's what you got to watch for. You're going to start bleeding through. Might just have to fill that. Now this is where this would be acceptable. Because it's just so tiny. So thin. So I'm going to go ahead and use it just to show you that you can use this. But yeah, you would normally go back and do polyester putty. But some people will get mad at you if you say this is garbage. It's not. Okay. Go ahead and do it here. Just if you're going to use it, just make damn sure you do that. Just push it in there real good. Basically the idea is when you're block sanding is to get rid of those low places like that, you know. See, uh, further sanding, the dent's gone. So, these are really freaking awesome right here for this kind of stuff. So, we're going to just go in that groove and keep trying to block that little low thing out. See, we're already cutting through, but it's going away. Okay, and real quick on this other one is understanding what a factory imperfection is. Now, I like factory imperfections. I want to keep them on there if I can. I think this one has one right here. Watch, we'll, look, we'll see it. See, this one has a factory imperfection. It has a high spot right there. It's not gonna change the way anything looks. That's fine though. So just know the difference of a factory imperfection 
you know, somebody didn't go in from the inside and, and knock it out. Okay, so factory imperfection, high spot, leave it alone. Stuff's dried, we're gonna go ahead and block it. It blocks real easy. Okay, that's what I was saying, it's okay to use because, I mean, look, it just, there's barely anything. All right. Three more coats, thick coats of primer. Okay, so we got the three coats of primer on it now. We're gonna do our final block sanding with 400. I'm gonna do it with this soft block. Now we're blocking out all the orange peel all over it. See the orange peel? Blocking it out with 400. We got it finally blocked out. You can see that all the orange peel is gone. We bled through some places. And what you can always do to test your work is put it in sealer. You need to put it in sealer anyway, but I'm going to use a black sealer. And it's going to simulate the paint and we're going to see what we have to work with. That way we need to go back and do some more repairs. There was some freaking problems where the way I was using the sandpaper, I cut into it with the corner of one a little piece of sandpaper. So I got a little stupid pinhole thing. Same thing happened right there. So just <laughs> anything can go wrong. Now we're gonna pretend that this is a freaking tack rag. I don't have one. I didn't think I was gonna get this far today. But we're gonna pretend that this is a tack rag. Since that stuff is chalky, you will want to wax and grease remove it. Try to wipe in ways that you're getting all the crap off of it. And don't go back and recirculate that crap, see? put one coat on there I should have reduced it down I hate the fucking people at the paint stores that act like they know what they're talking about they told me not to reduce it we know that we are good see so you want to reflect the light off of everything see that's the process that these people go through to get their car like that 100% perfect. We didn't use no freaking DA. Didn't even use any power tools. It's all in the block sanding. second coat see that light bouncing off now this is sealer but yeah it's starting to get some crap in it yeah I got something went in it right there but when it's so shiny you just don't see it and this has little craps in it something went in somewhere right there but you just don't notice it okay so there you go. I hope you have a better understanding on the process of bodywork. It is the same thing on a door fender. It's just bigger blocks and more headaches. Well anyway, if you liked the video, please subscribe and thanks for watching.